Gracious God, oh my Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you this evening, thank you for this opportunity to bring it to each of us for our presence, and we just want to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for our gathering because that is a learning process of the word that we all need to be grown and to be successful in this yes. And we just want to say thank you. Please bless us as we undertake this journey. Bless us, O God. We shall never give you the praise for all things in Jesus. Just say amen. amen. While you're standing up, scripture for the evening, Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, our land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, knowing that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and now we are saved. We are his peoples and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to the thanksgiving with me. Thanksgiving into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of this word. God bless you. Let's give everybody now a hand. Of the Greater Memphis District. So we're going to get started with our training because who knows our theme for today? What's our theme? Mission is possible. Amen. So we're going to have some basic combat training. Okay. So starting off, we're going to have none other than Evangelist Annie Hunt. And she's going to be teaching about, she's our missions operator, okay. officer, and she's going to be talk, talking about be alert and ready. So as she comes, let's give her an end. Pray to me to God. I got to put my eyes on because I can't see. But you know what? I'm happy that I'm ready. I am here. And I thank God for the GCT is in the house. And you know what? When I drove up, I saw GCT. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God, and the field, I don't, I ain't gonna start calling them that. I'm no, just no. not gonna do that. I, I'm just glad to see Ella Payton. God bless yeah. you. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And before I get started, uh, Brother Hunt is out there. Is uh, uh, you know, Sister Hunt is a. I'm also a, uh, an author. The Lord has blessed me to write a book, and I want to share those that do not know. Uh, I am writing, starting another book, and I'm almost there, but I am an author of a book. And I, this this is too hot. If you don't mind, please. Thank you. I, I'm getting really hot. Thank you, Abby. Don't tell brother, I'll put it somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord blessed me to write a book, and this is what it looks like. Amen. He Amen. called my name. Amen. Okay. Now, don't let the title fool you. Fool you okay. And I think Sister Farrah read my book, and a few other of you have read my book. Yeah. And I hope it has blessed you. Yeah. And okay, I hope you buy my book so you can read my book. It's out front, okay. It's twelve dollars if you buy it, okay. Or you go to my website and download it to your phone. But you know, and I'm gonna tell you just a little something about it. We're talking about being alert and ready. But before I get started with that, uh, real quick, is the reason I wrote this book is because one, for myself, it helped me to rid myself of some anxiety that I had, that it had to be loose and bound in my life. Two, my husband encouraged me to do so. And, and not that, not, 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 don't put God in the background because he, he's the head of my life, okay? It became a vendetta for me, okay, that it had to be done. That demon had to be loosed in my life. And I was embarrassed of some things in my life that had to be loosened and be, and because it became an embarrassment for me. And you would say, well, how so it became an embarrassment for me? Well, you didn't know. You know, you can look on the outside. I don't look like 
what I've been through. Okay? I don't look like it, but I had some things on the inside of the that had to be loosed and, 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 and destroyed in my life. Okay? And a lot of times you look at people and they're not what they seem. And I was not what I said. Now, what about you? I just had some things on the inside that had to be re removed. So, and then I, I wanted because a lot of times people are afraid to talk about things in their lives. God had to lose that. And also, I, I, I had to learn to believe in myself, in the God that was in me. And also, and these things happened to me as a child. And then when these things happen to you as a child, you bring it over into a thug. So a lot of people don't believe that, but oh, yes, you do. These things you bring over, if they're not loose as a child, you bring them over into a thug. And the situation that I was into, they were beginning to be a hidden thing that people don't see. It's those hidden sins that people don't see that God has to loosen. And, bring, and get them out of your life, okay? I also wrote the book because uh, these things that people don't want to talk about, especially church people, right. because uh, all they want to do is pray it away. Some things you can't pray everything away. You got to confess those things, okay? Right. You got to confess it. And once you confess and repent of those things, and then let God do the rest, okay? You know, I was hurting on the inside. I was burning on the inside. My heart was heavy. I was grieving. And this book is also for people that were going through the same thing I was going through. I needed a solution. I needed counseling, even as a child. But thank God for that Holy Ghost for your mother of mine. Woo, if you have a mother, a grandmother that's saved and praying for you, you need to be thankful for that mother. You hear me? Mother, pray for me. That God would loose that band of wickedness. I couldn't sleep at night, Elder. I could not sleep. I heard voices. Man. It was so bad one night. I mean, I'm telling you, it looked like I heard the gates of hell open up to the point that the demon came on my bed and scratched to claw me to death. That's how bad it got. Then you read my book and you will see what I'm talking about. It got that bad. Put yourself in my shoes when you read this book. But thank God for a saved Holy Ghost for your mother. Amen. That prayed for me. Woo! And I'm telling you, I, she couldn't even take me to a funeral. It got just that bad. She said, I'm going to have to take her to the head doctor, they said. Because back there when I was just, they didn't know the word psychologist or psychiatrist. She said, head doctor. Well, we didn't have money for that. So what they had to do, she had to call on Jesus. And that's what she did. I'm here today because of a praying mother. Praise God. I don't have nightmares anymore. Praise be to God. I don't hear voices anymore. And I don't look like what I've been through. I could have been anything that I've been. I could have been a sex, I could have been a whore, I could have been anything. I could have been a drug addict. Because when people put sin in you, if you know what I'm talking about, Amen. it causes all type of demonic spirits. And people don't believe, believe but I'm telling you what I know. I've been there. Praise be to God. Now get my book and back. Amen. Amen. If you've been through trauma, I don't care what kind of trauma it is. Now some of you probably been through worse than I have. Then you need to get that book. He called my name. And you will see who called my name. And you will see the trauma. You will see why this picture is here. It's a reason for all of this. Amen. I want you to get it and see it. Amen. And read about it. I will give y'all this book, but this book is for Sister Kim. <laughs> I promise her this book. All right. Praise be to God. All right. My time is winding up. All right. Be alert and ready. Because the Lord is on his way back. You know, this is a timely message. A lot of times we get away from talking about being alert and ready. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we get away from this? Y'all, do we forget that the Lord is on his way back? Right. And you know what I think? I'm going to tell you what I think. Right? Oh, okay. Okay, so mm. No, I ain't. I'm going to open this big mouth. 
I'm going to tell you something. We get away from telling people that the Lord is coming back because mm, I ain't got enough money in my purse or my pocket. Nobody paid me for anything. So it don't matter to me. I ain't got nothing to lose, okay? And I'm not losing my salvation for anyone. But the Lord is on his way back. And he's coming for a church. Okay, let's let's turn to your Bible real quick. Let's go to Luke 12, 35 to 4. And it's not very long. I'm gonna read this real quickly. Y'all get, get, go ahead and get it real quickly. And this is what it's like. Did I, uh, well, Okay, y'all, y'all do the, the house bill address. Okay, so the, 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 we here. Okay, we are here. Praise God and thank God for Sister Paula and our mothers and, and all the missionaries in the house. And forgive me for not addressing everyone. God bless you. Okay, to all of you and thank God for my husband outside there. Okay, thank you. Praise God. He. he Doing whatever he, he does as a husband, okay? So Luke 12, 35 to 40 said, 35 said, let your lawns be girded about and your lights burn. 36, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return for the wet, from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are these servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. 38. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this note that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would watch and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Last verse, be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. All right, real quick. I'm going to tell y'all something about me. I love dogs. I have two. I have a dog named Cody. Cody weighs 89.9 pounds. I have a girl dog. Her name is Holly. She weighs almost 60 pounds. You said, what would you do with them big old dog? And they live in my house. Is my house clean? You better believe it. All right. But they are always on alert. Ready when we get home. They ready for snacks. They are alert for sounds. And they are alert for their cues and commands. Cody has an emergency call. Cody, we sent him to obedience school. Now, I was there because he had to listen to my voice and Deacon Hunt's voice. He has a command. I don't care what he's doing. I don't care if he's playing with his little sister. I don't care if he's out there wrestling and fighting. When I give him that cold, or did not give him that cold, he drop it and come running through that doggy door. Hmm. He gets a snack. He's alert to the command and ready for his reward. Well, what you talking about? Don't y'all have that alert with you? You're supposed to be carrying it with you every day. Thank you. Every day you're supposed to be carrying your alert, your antenna, every day. Now, I remember when my husband was in the military. He was up E7 in the arm. And there was something that they did every day. We got on my nerve. Five o'clock. Da, da, da. Ella Fields, you know. You know what that meant when that trumpet sound? Every soldier supposed to be at attention. I don't care if you were in the grocery stores, if you were in the dollar store, I, I was a civilian. I supposed to stop. And the soldiers, oh, it doesn't matter. If, if they had civilian clothes on, they supposed to do this. Guess what they were doing? They were staying at attention while the trumpet blow taps on the speaker. They could not move until the entirety of the song was sung. This was because they honored the fallen military members. The trump is going to blow one day. Right. Are you going to be alert and ready? Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you something. The mission is possible. 
but are you going to be ready? So the trumpet sound brings a sound of alertness. Does it not? Yes. Have you heard of trumpet blow before? I like violin music. That's my favorite. But that trumpet brings a sound that no other brings. What was the Sunday school lesson about this past Sunday morning? Holy, holy, holy. And said when the chair said holy, holy, holy to the other, what happened? Oh, uh -uh. the point shook. It shook because that shepherd said it with such power. When God comes, he's coming with power. When that trumpet blows, it don't take a one. Oh my God, if everybody in heaven blows the trumpet, can you, it's going to shake the earth off this very axle. That's how much power our God has. Be the Lord ready. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't get it right down here, you ain't going up there. You can't get it right up there. That's too late. That's right. Lord, this place needs to be full right now because we got to get it right down here. Okay, you might say, well, how can I get it right? Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to get right here, and I'm, I'm about through. How much time I got, Paul? I'm about through. You have seven minutes. Okay, so let me tell you this. How can I get it right? I plan to God. One day Bishop Porter asked me, it was Mother's Day, and he said they were giving flowers out to all the mothers. And so I had a flower someone gave, and I really didn't want the flowers. They were just passing them out. Well, it's not that I didn't want it. I wanted him to give it to all the mothers that didn't have, that were older than me. Okay, I know I look like an old mother. Okay. So I said, well, okay, no, baby, give it to Michelle. I feel laughing at me. I said, uh, no, give it to that mother. But he gave it to me anyway. I said, okay, okay. So I took the flower. But I had to go do something, so I named the flower that. So by the time I got back, Ella Payton and Ella McNair, Bishop said, who flower was this? I said, where's mine, Bishop? I was asking who flower was this. And I said, where's mine, Bishop? Like this. And the little mother came up, she said, Bishop, you're supposed to say me a flower. So Bishop said, well, Bishop, how do you need this? I said, no, sir, I don't need it. No, Bishop, I don't need it. I said, she can have it. So he gave her, and he said, so don't you got a green bone? I said, yes, sir, I do. So I'm going to answer that question again. I do have a green thumb. Thank God for that green thumb I got. I got an auntie that taught me how to plant flowers and do things. So I'm going to tell you how to get ready. And I'm going to tell you how to stay ready. This is what you do. Just like my flower God. One day I wish I would take you out to my house see how pretty my flower God. Yeah, I'm bragging because God helped me and taught me. Thank God for my aunt to have a beautiful yard. And I'm going to tell you how. Because when you take that flower, say you bought it with a, with a root on it. Well, I'm going to transplant this root from this thing to my God. Have you heard of miracle grow? Yeah. Well, your Holy Ghost is miracle grow. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost is your miracle grow. So when you place yourself from one place to the next, you're going into the miracle grow of your my God. So when I plant it from one thing, I take the root from here and pour it and put it into my miracle grow. And I put the dirt over it. Oh, I don't just leave it there all week long because I go back. Guess what? The day was going to attack my plant. Say it again, mother. It's the weeds. So I go and pluck the weeds from off my plant that I put the miracle boy. But something else doesn't happen. The plant has grown a little bit, even with the weeds around it. But the more I pull up the weeds, the more the plant grows with the barrel. And guess what? The roots grow deeper. Yeah. And the deeper the roots grow, the more the stem grow. And then the, you see them put, girl, my plants be this tall. And the, one day my, my neighbor come, glory to God. My neighbor came over and he said, that's not a camel on a luna or whatever he said. I said, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. He said, how you get it to grow like that? I said, oh, don't you want to know? <laughs> I got to tell you the story. Praise be to God. I'm telling you, if you want to stay in this game, let me tell you what you got to do. You got to try my miracle bro. Yes. You need my miracle bro. And it's the Holy Ghost. If you don't have it, you need to 
get it today. That's how you stay in this game. Yes. We are soldiers in this army. You ain't got time to fight. You can't give up now. It's too late in the evening. We can't give up now. What is that Proverbs, I think 22 and 10. If you're fighting the day of adversity, your strength is small. You can't fight now. Don't be weak. Why are you weak? I think we have been in this thing too long. And let me tell you what we do. Here comes somebody. Here comes God is having a, 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 a miracle ceremony. People getting saved and people being delivered. Oh, I've seen that before. Oh, I, child, I've been to so many of them. Like, See, you too calm with God. I heard Bishop J. O. Patterson say, he said, God ain't your buddy. Oh, we, we just, we, we all buddy, buddy with God. Really? Thank you, Elder. God is not our buddy. He's our creator. And we need to reverence him and give him the reverence and the praise that he deserves. Woo, Lord, I'm going to sit up and sit down. And this, this is my last thought for the day. And I hope y'all hear it and take it and love it. I need y'all to be like Cody and Holly. And this is my conclusion. When Claude and Holly get out there and do their uh, rough house, well, Claude outweigh Holly by 20 pounds. But well, she's a pretty dog. I, I, I wish I could show y'all my babies. They're my baby. Holly know I love my babies. She know that too. And I'm going to tell you, and Sister Barron knows too, but I was talking to her the other day about my baby. And I'm going to tell you, he outweighs her by 20 pounds. But I'm going to tell you, she's a, she's a go getter. They mix picks. But Cody, I think, has a little great day in him. I think, because everybody keeps saying, uh uh, he ain't no pit. A dog too big for a pit, but uh, uh, he my big boy. But let me tell you something. He outweighs her about 20 good pounds. And I'm going to tell you, when they get out there, what happens? And when you hurt my girl, I can't take it. Uh -huh. And then she'll go, oh, uh, ooh, something threw me, sister fam. Uh -huh. Something go through me. I swear you will think that's my, my real flesh dog. Something go through me. I said, Cody, you done hurt my girl. And uh, you know what she does? She shakes it off. She shakes it off and get right back in there. She keep fighting. But that's what we should do. Yeah. And I'm so sick of folks telling me about church hurt. How many of y'all ain't in church hurt? All right, all right. I said, ain't been church up. <laughs> Tell the truth. Okay. Keep living, sweet. <laughs> That's all I can say. Keep living. Everybody that my age, you've been church up. Yes, yes, yes. I've been church up. That means I don't go to church no more. I, I've been visiting. Baby, don't let the Lord catch you out here in this world. But you go to work, they cuss you out of work. You're right back there on Monday morning. Yeah. And whatever else you like, uh, at your card game, they can cuss you out and throw tea in your face. You're right back there on Friday night. But church hurt. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm finished. Pray be to God. So when you get in trouble and you get hurt, shake it off. Shake it off. And get back in the fight. Let's stay alert and ready. Because the Lord is on his way back. That's my message. Can you please give them your website? I put that it's available on Amazon, but could you give them your website? Oh, yeah. My website is www.mynameant.com. And that's A N N T. Dot com. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you all.